Alright y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mo and today I'll be wrapping up all the books that I read in the first quarter of the year. So in January I read seven books and I started with Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is following Robin. He was orphaned very early in his life and he was kind of adopted by this guy and brought up to learn different languages and in this world there is kind of a magic system slightly like there's these <laughs> this is gonna be hard to explain like you you might just need to go somewhere else for a more coherent okay so in this world there's magical silver bars just basically if you know different languages you can kind of bridge two words that kind of mean a similar a similar thing and they make a whole new meaning with the silver bars and they do stuff one example that I, I remember is like they put a silver bar on this engine and it made it like accelerate faster and like it can make you disappear and stuff like that I believe I talked about this book in one of my vlogs it was I should have a card about it but I think it was whenever I read your, your favorite um reads of 2023 I'm gonna be honest I'm not really into historical fiction that much it's not one of my favorite genres I'm I can definitely get into it I feel like there are a couple books that I've read that I've enjoyed but throughout this whole book I was honestly very bored and I only really gave it I was gonna give it maybe four stars or three and a half because R.F. Kuang I feel like had a lot of relevant conversation about colonialism imperialism just a lot of systemic isms and all the research and the history that she put into this i feel like that was a lot to do there were a lot of footnotes uh the audiobook i was pairing it with the audiobook and the narrator was cool but like it wasn't really like enhancing my experience of the book i kind of fell asleep multiple times but i did give it three stars because i do feel like our kwong accomplished a lot but yeah i feel really bad though I, I really wanted to like it and give it a five star like i mean i didn't hate it but by the time i got interested in it it was probably like past 80 percent yeah let's move on I went on my first cruise in January and I was trying to read like a bunch of like short books or books that had like cruises or Mexico in them. That trip for my first cruise it was very just like rainy and cold. It wasn't given but I had a lot of time to read so a couple of these books are just like fun books that I read to keep me in the vacation spirit. So the first book that I read for that was Silver Lining by Chaslin or Chaslin Hamilton. To help her get over her last situation Cam goes on a singles cruise with her cousin slash bestie. At first she wasn't really into the idea she was like this is cringy like I'm not gonna meet anybody here i'm just gonna like stay to myself i'm not gonna try to mingle and then she runs into her old professor that she used to have a crush on the only reason why this book was on my radar is because capri from capri's book island she had mentioned it a while back i don't know when she read it but it's been on my mind ever since i realized that i was gonna book a cruise i really loved how chaslin made the cruise setting and the tourist view the bahamas so accurate teacher student it gets really weird for me but this is years later and sylvester he's the professor he makes it very plain and very well known that he doesn't mess with his students at all and like she's grown now i think she's like I forget how old she is. She might be like early 30s and he's like maybe like middle 40s, something like that. But he was just like, I don't get involved with my students. I don't get involved with my students. And his friend that's with him that encouraged him to go on the cruise is like, she's not a student anymore and she's grown. Like obviously there's an attraction there, like go for it. I felt like they had so much chemistry and they had so much fun together. And that kept me engaged the whole entire time. Spicy scenes were definitely given and I wish the book was a lot longer. Next, I read The Art of Scandal by Regina Black. In the words of our hot girl coach, AKA my wife, Megan Thee Stallion, it didn't happen if the wasn't snapping okay okay rachel and matt have hit a rough patch in their marriage and haven't been cool or intimate with each other in close to a year and one day she gets like this like promiscuous little little pick and she's like is this my husband and i'm like damn how long has it been that like, you don't even recognize his dick no more like y'all been together for like 13 years and you don't remember what it looks like i was like hmm um but she was like this obviously wasn't for me because we haven't been on that time so what the so she confronts him about it and it's like on his 30th or 40th birthday something like that she confronts him about it and she's like what the f like going crazy and everyone's like because they, they were hosting like a birthday party at their house and i believe he's in like local government i think and he wants to be the mayor or something in the white house i don't even know child i don't i don't know but he was running for something political and he was using her basically as like a black trophy wife and he was like hey we'll cut a deal um, if you stay with me, like, I'll give you, like, a million dollars in the house. And she was like, I deserve at least that. And I'm like, for 13 years, just a million? I don't know. Because he comes for money and, like, he get money. So I'm like, he could definitely afford to. So many stories like this make me really, like, anxious for the women because they put all their eggs in one basket with the man and, like, they have to depend on the man for their living. And it really stresses me out. She's all, like, planning on doing this whole, this whole ruse basically to make sure everyone thinks that they're still like cool and in comes Nathan he's like this young artist I think he's early 20s there's like at least a 10 year age gap and for a while I was kind of like mm, I don't know I don't know how I feel about it but it worked he knew what he he wanted out of life and from her 
and he was still very young in some of his views but I feel like the way they communicated was nice and refreshing and he also brought a lot of her passions for her old hobbies and like her old self back and she found herself through their relationship which I enjoyed reading about. Yeah, I just hated Matt real bad. I just hated how he was trying to capitalize off of her for the black boat. I love Nathan Down. Sometimes I feel like the timing of the book was like thrown off, but overall I really enjoyed it. Next, I read Take a Chance by Maiko May. As soon as I tell y'all I don't rate novellas, I be rating novellas. So I'm not gonna say I don't rate them, but I have a hard time rating them and I don't always do it. On vacation in Mexico, Cassandra and Cyrus unexpectedly bump into each other. It was only 70 pages, but I really feel like you can gather the, the bond and like, the connection that they had because they were um I don't know if they ever dated I think they just went to school together and they might have been feeling each other a little bit but it was just like she was like her head was in the books and he was like I always I was always feeling you and you just never like looked up and that kind of thing yeah I liked it I think it was a very nice balance of like sexy and also cute uh they had really good moments I think it was a really good read for like warmer months and I think if you're going on a vacation I forgot why she was there but I think his sibling was getting married there and she was just at the same resort that's what it was yeah they bumped into each other at a resort i don't know if they have other books but i would definitely read more and then i read again by jl seegers i did not rate this one either i forgot their names but we followed two people that were married at one point and they find their way back to each other at a resort in mexico oh their siblings are getting married okay if you want to read a story where the man is way more obsessed than you might like this the whole time i was reading this i was like he is so determined like he he to her the long way okay there was never a doubt in my mind that he really loved her or at least was like a like really attracted to her because sometimes i was just like okay you keep saying you miss that body you miss that body but like what else what else there is infidelity and infertility discussed in this book so if you are sensitive to those topics i would not read this without you know knowing that during the book it's kind of explained why they weren't together for so long i forgot how long they weren't together but they weren't together and it explains it briefly in like little bitty pieces as they interact with each other more and then you finally understand towards the end of the book and i think that they were both wrong in the situation without telling y'all what happened i feel like he shouldn't have been opening his mouth and i feel like she shouldn't have believed anyone besides him like in a marriage there shouldn't be no outside opinions for real and i know that's hard to say but like y'all are a team and y'all need to like work together through situations and i feel like they both dropped the ball on that one and then next i read all systems read by martha wells this was just so fun for me mayana was the first person i ever heard talk about this and i still don't really hear a lot of people talk about this series i definitely need to finish it because i've only read the first one so far and they're really short books i haven't read a whole lot of sci-fi and i feel like this made me more interested to read sci-fi even though i i still haven't i'm more interested now than i was before none of the things were that confusing for me and things didn't go over my head i feel like if you're intimidated by sci-fi this is a good series to start with i enjoyed murderbot's thought i think they were very funny and i like dry humor i also had the audiobook with it i believe so that also added to my enjoyment of the book this follows a cyborg that named themselves murderbot and they basically just want to watch trashy tv all day they don't want to be security they don't want to do nothing yeah the ending surprised me and i really want to continue the series to see what kind of shenanigans they get up to lastly in january i read the kingdom of copper by sa chakraborty did i read this this book in a video i don't know because it's the second book of the david bod trilogy i'm not going to talk about it but i did read city of brass in december and i want to say i read that one for a video too i think that was my um reading your favorites as well as Babel. i think so so then in february the first book that i read was the last book of that trilogy the empire of gold honestly it's been so long i don't really remember a lot about the series anymore i feel like sometimes when you read a trilogy what you well, for me personally, I don't remember everything that happened in each book, but I just remember as a collective how I enjoyed the whole series. And this is a very solid series. I would definitely recommend it if you like reading about Jin, Islamic like folklore. There was some political intrigue in there as well. Next, I read a graphic novel. It was called Curl Friends. New in Town is by Cherie Miller. This is a middle grade graphic novel about Charlie starting at a new school and finding friends that she can actually be herself around. I love the illustrations down. I screenshotted a couple of them. I hope I didn't delete them. If I did, I'm gonna be mad, but I'm gonna put them on the screen. They were just so beautiful to me i love all the colors i'll be honest i hated how charlie was lying the whole the whole book i'm sorry if you're interested in reading it and you didn't want to hear that but i didn't like it i know she was just a middle grade girl she's a girl at the end of the day i understand but several times the people in her circle were reassuring her that like hey we like you for who you are and she was just like nah <laughs> nah i'm gonna do me which she wasn't though i've never been the new kid at 
a school ever so i can't really relate to this and i think that's part of my irritation because i was just like damn girl is like is it ever deep to not show up as yourself sometimes middle school is just an awkward time for a lot of people and i'm happy that charlie found the right people soon and she started to open up to them eventually the next three books i did read in a vlog it's my mood reading trying to get out of slump that was spoiler free and i'm not going to go into super depth about these books because they are in a vlog so if that bothers you watch the vlog um i did first read lemon pepper by nina in that video and i gave it three and a half stars i'm just going to give you the summary about that one um two individuals they cross paths and they find several familial connections healing from grief and love where they least expect it that was one of my subscribers recommendations and i really enjoyed it then i read the first book in I don't know what this series is called. I think it's the Lost and Found series by Natasha Bishop. I read Where We Found Our Home. Sierra leaves her hometown because someone is threatening not only her life, but the people that she loves. She has this plan to move towns, not tell her close friends and family where, and just not make connections with any new people, which obviously that doesn't end up working because she finds a home. I really enjoyed Lincoln and Sierra's bond, but at times I just wish there was more depth because it got serious really fast. It was also 239 pages. And I find that I have that issue a lot with shorter books. Like when I say shorter, I mean like, really less than 300 maybe 350 i have a problem with really connecting because i haven't i don't feel like i spent enough time with the characters just to really like believe their their feelings for each other and their seriousness lastly for that video i read a five star read and it was the stars and the blackness between them by janata petrus great book no notes it had queerness coming of age a little bit of magical realism it had me feeling things i did start a author binge series my first author that i decided to really get into their works and see if i like them is christina c jones i first read for that video hostile takeover and i gave that one five stars then i read the first book in this strictly professional series is called strictly professional i gave that one four stars the second book of that series is unfinished business i gave that one four stars and then there was a sister series called the love sisters i want to say i read i think i might love you i gave that one 4.25 stars i think i might need you i gave four stars and then i think i might want you four and a half stars and then next, I had another vlog, which I read classic books by black authors, and I read Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. I gave that one four and a half stars. And The Street by Anne Petrie, I gave that one five stars. Then a book that I read in between, because I was just kind of like, uh, I was kind of burnt out from the classics. I read How to Fail, How to Fail at Avoiding an Alpha Demon by Liz E. Cooper. I gave it three and a half stars. I found this one on TikTok. She saved him from destruction. Now he won't leave her alone. This is an Omega verse with magic and demons. Uh, I think he was like a detective slash cop, which I really hated that. Um, I feel like there were plenty of other occupations that he could have had for this to work out. But there was something on, like different demons have different categorizations and he is a berserker, which means like he's got like super bad anger issues and like he can really turn up and like cause a lot of damage and hurt people. And because he is a police, like it's not good for him to be like that at all. Female main character, she's like, a magical therapist i would say like she can really like manipulate people's minds and like kind of make them do whatever she wants and make them feel things so she's like trying to work with him and like he's plotting on the low because he's like i'm attracted to her real bad like she is my mate it was like a faded mate things but she didn't feel the same way because i think she was a witch she was a witch i want to say and he wasn't a demon yeah so it was like cross species species so she didn't really feel the feelings that he felt but he was just like she mine yeah what did i give it three and a half is a little bit generous i would say it was three 2.75 i'm gonna leave it at three and a half um because i think i read it really fast and i was just like i needed this and then lastly for the classics video i read if bill street could talk by james baldwin i gave that one four stars the last two books that i read in march i read jade city by fonda lee and i read jade war and i'm not gonna tell y'all my ratings right now because the next video after this should be the green bone saga series reading vlog jade city will be spoiler free and then jade war and jade legacy are gonna be full of spoilers if you're interested that's gonna be coming out so stay tuned for that that's all the books that i read in the first three months of the year that was 24 books total and i'm currently reading jade legacy for that video i really want to finish it my birthday's in a couple days and i want to read things that bring me joy not that jade legacy isn't but like right now it's just like a lot of politics and i'm just trying to figure out who is who sometimes and figure out what's gonna happen and i'm just getting anxious because i don't want to finish the series but the series needs to be finished and i know everyone says like this third one is like very gut-wrenching and very ozy from ozy's orbit my friend here on youtube she was like buckle up on goodreads and i was like oh buckle up what the hell did i get myself into i don't really want to set any goals for myself for april because i have not been reading as much as i typically do i just want to read whatever and have fun i the the main books on my on my yeah 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 the main books on my mind right now this could be asked by kennedy ryan there's this book called beast by sky moon it's a urban 
Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, I do want to get into Zane. Zane is one of like the most well-known black authors in the erotica scene. Zane gets nasty. I don't know. I've never read Zane. I know that they have been a part of so many generations um, exploration and sexuality. So I'm interested. I want to read the, I don't know what the series is called, but the first one is called Tempted by Danger by India Carter. Memes23, the one that gave me all the recommendations on that list, she said that I might like this one. So I'm gonna see if I can read that in April. And then I put The Sword of Kaigen on here by Emma Wan or Emma Swan. I don't know who it's by. Sorry, it's gonna be on the screen. But that book is thick. I don't think I'm reading that, but eventually I will. That's really all the books that I really wanna read in April. I don't know if I'll get to any of them, but those are the things that I'm excited to read at this moment in time. So. Thank y'all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.